Welcome to another episode of Bionicle, Rise of a Phenomenon. I'm Lord of Bionicles, your host. In this, the 2001st episode, we're going to be taking a look at the first year of Bionicle, which was what started it all. Matinui, a tropical paradise island. Here there were six villages in which the Tohunga lived, friendly villagers representing an element, fire, air, water, ice, earth, and stone. Each village had an elder called Turaga, the wise man of the island, which led the Tohunga on their everyday tasks in order to serve the will of the great spirit Matanui, which the island was named after. It was also the great spirit Matanui who blessed the Tohunga and Turaga with the three virtues, unity, duty, and destiny. You see, with unity, you can perform your duty, and by performing your duty, you can fulfill your destiny, which is the main objective of most of the Bionicle characters like the Toa. The Tohunga and Turaga lived peacefully in the island, until one day, evil struck. Makuta, Matanui's brother, was jealous about all the feelings that Tohunga had towards the Great Spirit. And so, he cast a spell over Matanui, sending him to an unending sleep. With the Great Spirit asleep, Makuta was free to unleash all his evil on the island. He took control of the island's wildlife called Rahi and turned them into his servants infecting their Kanohi and sending them to attack the villages to bring the Tohunga's happiness to an end. But not all hope was lost, for one day, six mysterious canisters appeared on the island's coast. From those, powerful beings called Toa emerged. They became the island's heroes and the destined ones to stop Makuta's tyranny and save Matanui from its sleep. As I said, Bionicle's story was so great it caught us since the very beginning. Watching the Toa battle Makuta's minions and defending their respective villages was what characterized the good old days for Bionicle. One of the major differences from Bionicle and its predecessors, the Slicers and Rogue Riders, was a strong story and well-developed characters. Their names were original too. Tahu, Gali, Kopaka, Pohatu, Ornua, and Liwa. Or Lua. Or Lewa. <laughs> Since the beginning of Bionicle, there's been this enormous discussion about how is his name really pronounced. No one knows for sure. For example, the official guide to Bionicle claims it is pronounced like Lewa. Some CGI animations pronounce it like Lua, and also the movie Mask of Light pronounce it like Liwa. But anyway, the names were pretty original, unlike all the technique like names that Lego used in down the previous lines like Ski, Lava, or Swamp. Although it's interesting to know that the Tuan Mata's original names were gonna be technique like, yeah, they were actually gonna be called Flame, Hook, Blade, Kick, Claw, and Axe. Here comes a couple of important questions. Who created Barnacle and how was it created? Well, there were actually four men involved in the development of the original concept for Bionicle. Here's how it happened. With the failures of the Slices and Rogue Riders series, Lego knew that they would need some extra help for their new line so that the same mistake didn't happen twice. They approached Bob Thompson, a graduate of University of Wales College in Cardiff, to help them create a story for their new line. Then, Martin Anderson, a design manager for Lego, basically told Bob Thompson, Hey, we had this cool line called Slices which didn't work. So why don't we use the best from it and use it for this new line? Why don't we take the slicer sets and use them as prototypes so that we can start from a good point? Kristen Faber, art director for Advance, Lego's advertising agency who also worked on Manicle's predecessors, also joined the team and came up with the idea for the island of Matanui and having the characters live in it. <laughs> you see, when you think of biomechanical beings with mechanical parts and artificial intelligence, you would expect them to live on the high-tech world, wouldn't you? But no! Here they were on a tropical island with almost no technology, on an environment that didn't fit for them. <laughs> and it worked! It gave Bionicle its original taste! Last but not least was Alastair Swinnerton, a freelance writer hired by Lego, member of the company Scrutonite, who brought off his ideas based on his manga and mythology inspirations. He also wrote the original 2001 story bible, from which the story will be based. These four men were the creators, however, they were not the only ones involved. There was a whole story team working on Bionicle. The team was composed by Bob Thompson, head of the story team, Lena Dixon, franchise manager, Christopher Randall, lead designer, Christian Faber, art director, and Greg Farsty, comic and book writer, and also chief editor of the Lego magazine. There were also more people who I don't know if they were either part of the story team or not, but they were very important contributors to Bionicle. Martin River Anderson, design manager, Paul Bofton, marketing, and Lee Weston Kai head of the Bionicle.com team. Now, how would LEGO promote these sets when their previous attempts at promoting the Slices and Rowriders had failed? 
By making a deal with the world's largest chain hamburger fast food restaurants. Like approach McDonald's to sell some of their Tohunga sets. Thus, every kid around the corner and they're getting a Bionicle with their Happy Meals. With their, con with their publicity constantly announced in Bionicle.com, people started to grow an interest in it. And soon, the name Bionicle began to spread among everybody. Bionicle.com was Bionicle's official site. It showed a lot of information on every character and location of Bionicle. Also, it had these CGI mini videos which would become a tradition. For now, it only showed each of the toe and some of their capabilities, like Watch Kapaka here, the avalanche is coming, he stopped the snow and just won the last of his sword! Or how about Pride over here, he destroyed a rocky structure and then moonwalk out of the scene. So cool! As I said in my previous video, the Bionicle sets were innovative, with bright colors and changeable pieces. Say for whatever reason, you don't like how Pohato looks like, and you would like him to be different. No problem, you would just need to make some adjustments. And here you have, your own version of a Bionicle set made with the same pieces. Now, most of the Bionicle characters are biomechanical beings, but what exactly is a biomechanical being? Well, it's someone who has mechanical parts all connected to organic tissue. Let me explain. A toy is mostly composed of mechanical parts such as their arms, legs, and head. The organic tissue is what connects those pieces together, forming the body. For example, Atoa could have his arm removed and then put it back on with no problem whatsoever. There were actually three comics, which told the story of the Toa coming to Matsunui and looking for the Kanohi masks in order to defeat the Rocky of the island. Each Toa would collect six masks, because they can only wear one at a time, they had to keep the other ones under Suba, a special shrine which can store Kanohi masks so that the Toa can summon them whenever they need it. Once they got all of these six masks, they would merge into one golden Kanohi, which had the powers of all of them, so that the Toa didn't have to change them all the time. By the end of the year, the Toa went on to Mangaya, a secret lair beneath Matsunuri where they defeated Makuta and awoke the Great Spirit Matsunuri. Or did they? <laughs> Originally, they did. Bob Thompson, head of the story team, had planned for Bionicle to only last one year. Since they didn't think it would be such a success, they thought to end the story with the Toa fulfilling their mission in 2001. It wasn't until Greg Farsty, also a member of the story team and writer of the comics, who questioned the reason for the series only lasting one year. And the main thing I remember from that was getting to the end and going, you're going to end it after a year? You're waking up Mata Nui after a year? I said, this, this thing has so much potential. This could be such a big de thing. You know, it's so incredibly interesting. Why would you want to end it after a year? So, Lego decided to expand the series up to 20 years. Yeah, you heard that right. Banco was so popular, they thought it could hold off for a long time. Huh? Could you imagine if that had happened? We would have had Bionicle up until the year 2021. All the story that will come out, all the books, comics, web game, contests, collectibles. It would have been awesome. So Bionicle had this interactive web game on Bionicle.com called Matsumi Online Game. It was one of the main reasons that Bionicle got successful in its first years, because it helped expand the story to such a point that we were really interested in. It, it was full of all these missions in which you had to collect items and go to certain locations and meet some of the characters and you were really a part of the story because you felt that you were really there and watching all what that was happening. It also, it showed the final confrontation between the two Amata and Makuta. It didn't stop there. This little Tamatoran called Takua got trapped in Mangaya and in his attempt of getting out of there, he found a nest filled with strange beings which were beginning to hatch. Wait a second, what are those things? Where did they come from? Will the Toa stand a chance against them? We will have to wait until next year to find out what happens when you awake the mighty Borok.